Prednisolone has been around for more than 60 years and is still commonly prescribed for a variety of different conditions, despite some of its serious side effects. In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about this medication, especially what it does to the body and about its side effects. I'm also going to answer some frequently asked questions in my clinics, such as what is the difference between prednisone and prednisolone? Can it affect my mood? What are the long-term side effects? These are really important questions that you should be fully informed about when making a decision about taking your medication. So let's get started with what is prednisolone? Prednisolone is a corticosteroid medicine, or sometimes called a steroid for short. It's used to treat a wide range of health problems, including allergies, blood disorders, skin diseases, reduce swelling or inflammation, infections, and certain cancers and to prevent organ rejection after a transplant. Corticosteroids are not the same as anabolic steroids, which are misused by bodybuilders or athletes wishing to gain a competitive edge. Prednisolone can also calm down your immune system. This helps autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, where your immune system mistakenly attacked its own tissues. It's only available on prescription as tablets and as a liquid. It can also be given by injection, but this is usually only done in hospital. So how does it work? Steroids mimic the effects of stress hormones your body naturally produces in your adrenal glands. The adrenal glands sit on top of your kidneys. When prescribed in doses higher than your body's usual levels, Steroids, like prednisolone, dampen inflammation. This can reduce the symptoms of inflammatory conditions such as arthritis and asthma. So what's the difference between prednisone and prednisolone? Prednisone is commonly used in the US and prednisolone is commonly used in the UK. They are both used to treat similar conditions and are generally considered equally effective. However, in people with liver disease, prednisolone is usually preferred. This is because prednisone needs to be converted by liver enzymes into prednisolone before it can work. There are other steroids available in the UK, including deflazacort, dexamethasone, methylprednisolone. For most health problems, these steroids are very similar to prednisolone in terms of how well they work. So who may not be able to take prednisolone? To make sure it's safe for you, tell your doctor or pharmacist before taking it if you have ever had an allergic reaction to prednisolone or any other medicine. Have an infection including eye infections or any unhealed wounds. Are trying to get pregnant are already pregnant or you are breastfeeding. Have recently been in contact with someone with shingles, chickenpox or measles. Have recently had or about to have any vaccinations. Have liver problems. Have ever had or any close family members have had mental health problems. Have heart failure or have had a recent heart attack. Have high blood pressure have diabetes, have epilepsy, have glaucoma, have an underactive thyroid, have thinning of the bones called osteoporosis, or if you've ever had a stomach ulcer. So what's the dose? The dose of prednisolone you'll take depends on your health problem and whether you are taking it as a short course or for longer. The usual dose varies between 5 mg and 60 mg daily, but occasionally high doses may be prescribed. The strength of tablets range from 1 to 25 mg. There are two strengths of liquid with either 1 or 10 mg in every 1 ml. So what about changes to the dose? Your dose may go up or down. Once your health problem or condition starts to get better, it's likely that your dose will go down. Your doctor may reduce your dose before you stop treatment completely. 
This is to reduce the risk of withdrawal symptoms, which I will talk about a little later. And remember, your dose may go up if your symptoms get worse. So how do you take it? Unless your doctor or pharmacist gives you different instructions, it's best to take prednisolone as a single dose once a day with breakfast. For example, if your dose is 40 milligrams daily, your doctor may tell you to take eight tablets. That's eight times five milligrams all at the same time. Take prednisolone with breakfast so it doesn't upset your stomach. Taking it in the morning also means it's less likely to affect your sleep. And sometimes you may be told to take prednisolone on alternative days only. Now it is a good idea to wear a medical tag or carry a steroid card if you need to take prednisolone for the long term. So what are the side effects? The higher the dose of prednisolone that you take and the longer you take it for, the greater the chance of side effects. You're less likely to get side effects if you take a relatively low dose of prednisolone daily. Some side effects such as stomach upset or mood changes can happen straight away and others such as getting a rounder face happen after weeks or months. So what are the common side effects? Number one, weight gain. If you have to take prednisolone for more than a few weeks, it is likely that you'll put on weight. Prednisolone can make you hungrier and also can make you retain more water in your body. Once you stop taking it, your appetite and the way your body retains water should return to normal. Number two, indigestion. Take prednisolone with food to reduce the chances of stomach problems. It may also help if you avoid rich or spicy food while you're taking this medicine. If your symptoms carry on, ask your doctor if you may benefit from taking an additional medicine to protect your stomach. Number three, problems sleeping. Take prednisolone in the morning so the levels are lowest at bedtime. Number four, feeling restless. If you're feeling restless when you're trying to sleep, take it in the morning so the levels are the lowest at bedtime. Number five, sweating a lot. If this becomes bothersome, talk to your doctor as you may be able to try a different medicine. Number six, mild mood changes. So what are the serious side effects? You are more likely to have a serious side effect if you take a higher dose of prednisolone or if you've been taking it for more than a few weeks. Call a doctor straight away if you get a high temperature, chills, a very sore throat, ear or sinus pain, a cough, more saliva or a change in color of saliva, yellowish, and possibly with streaks of blood, pain when you pee, mouth sores, or a wound that will not heal. These can be signs of an infection. If you are sleepy or confused, feeling very thirsty or hungry, peeing more often, flushing or flashing, breathing quickly, or breath that smells like fruit, these can be signs of high blood sugar if you get weight gain in your upper back or belly, moon face, which is a puffy rounded face, very bad headaches and slow wound healing. These can be signs of Cushing syndrome. If you have a very upset stomach or you're vomiting, very bad dizziness or passing out, muscle weakness, feeling very tired, mood changes, Loss of appetite and weight loss, these can be signs of adrenal gland problems. If you have muscle pain or weakness, muscle cramps or changes in your heart rate, these can be signs of low potassium levels. If you have severe stomach pain, severe back pain, severe upset stomach or you're being sick, these can be signs of pancreas problems. If you get breathlessness or swelling in your arms or legs, changes in your eyesight or any bruising or bleeding that is not normal, red or black poo. And go to the hospital, accident and emergency department if you have black 
or dark brown vomit or your vomiting blood. And in rare cases, it's possible to have a serious allergic reaction to prednisolone. Now, I do want to add, if you notice mood changes and mental health problems while taking prednisolone that include feeling depressed, feeling high or moods that go up and down, feeling anxious, having problems sleeping, difficulty in thinking or being confused and losing your memory, if you're feeling, seeing or hearing things that do not exist called hallucinations, or if you're having strange and frightening thoughts or changing how you act or having feelings of being alone, talk to your doctor straight away. The higher the dose, the more intense the mood changes can be. And go to the hospital, accident and emergency department if you have thoughts about harming yourself or ending your life. So what are the long-term side effects? Taking prednisolone for a long time can lead to side effects such as thinner bones called osteoporosis. To check your bones, your doctor may arrange you to have an occasional bone scan. Poorly controlled diabetes. You may need to check your blood glucose more often. Eyesight problems. Now visit an optometrist every 12 months to check for high pressure in your eye called glaucoma and for cataracts. High blood pressure. Now you may need to get your blood pressure checked regularly. And stomach ulcers. You are also more likely to get stomach ulcers if you take prednisolone in combination with other anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or diclofenac or aspirin. If you are prescribed these medicines, ask your doctor about protective agents that can reduce this risk, such as omeprazole. I do have a video about omeprazole, which I will leave a link for down below. Now, these are not all the side effects of prednisolone. For a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. So, is there any food or drink I need to avoid? Don't eat real licorice while taking prednisolone. It's thought that the real licorice increases the amount of prednisolone in the body and also increases the risk of low potassium. So what are the cautions with other medicines? There are some medicines that can affect the way prednisolone works or increase the risk of side effects. It's very important you check a medicine if it's safe to take with prednisolone before you start taking it. This includes anti-inflammatory painkillers called NSAIDs such as ibuprofen, diclofenac and aspirin. I do have videos on these which I will leave links for down below. There are also anti-infectives such as ciprofloxacin and some HIV medicines, immune suppressants, diuretics also called water pills, and anticoagulants or blood thinners, but there are many more than this. So can prednisolone increase your risk of infection? Infections are more common in people taking prednisolone because it suppresses their immune system. This makes it harder for your body to fight off infection. In some circumstances, prednisolone can help pre-existing infections, particularly those by yeasts or fungi to spread. So symptoms of an infection may also not be as obvious or typical when you are on prednisolone. While you're taking it, you should take some precautions to reduce your risk of infection, such as washing your hands often and avoiding people who are sick, especially those with viral illnesses such as chickenpox or measles. Tell your doctor straight away if you develop any sort of infection, including eye infections or fungal infections while you're taking prednisolone. So stopping prednisolone and preventing withdrawal side effects. It can be dangerous to stop prednisolone suddenly, especially if you have been on a high dose for a long time. Your health condition may flare up. You may also get withdrawal side effects, including severe tiredness, weakness, body aches, joint pain. These side effects are most likely to happen if you have been taking prednisolone for more than a few weeks or if you take more than 40 milligrams a day. Your doctor will probably want to reduce your dose gradually over several weeks to prevent these side effects. This will be a dose schedule tailored specifically for you. 
So that wraps up our guide on prednisolone. If you have any questions or want to share your own experience, feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe for more clear and practical health information. You can also check out my other videos. And thank you for watching.